day two of me trying to vlog. It's a beautiful day today. You can see outside, the sun is shining. A little quiet, still not uh, quite the start of the turn. So what am I doing today? Uh, I've got a review of paper uh, for a colleague of mine, Regional Studies, and looking at servitization. So I've got to read and review that. I'm working on my own paper with uh, colleagues from all over the world. That's really exciting. Um, <clears throat> some great people were looking at what does value mean and trying to understand how value develops, so how you can measure it, what do you understand by value, uh, and therefore what are the different ways we can measure it. And that's um, phenomenological value, so the value that somebody has through an experience. I'm in charge of something called the DBA, uh, which is a Doctor of Business Administration. I'm trying to develop this new program globally. That's quite tricky. Um, so I'm starting off by asking people what they want. So starting from a value, you know, what do you value premise? So um, what do they want to get out of it and how can we deliver that to them? So I'm, I'm going to move that on a little bit today. Also bidding for some new money on um, trust, uh, information, security, privacy. Um, and we're looking at personalization uh, of services of products using data and how we can do that. So it's not too invasive of somebody's privacy, so we're not asking people to give us all their information so we can deliver them a book and maybe mine that. How can we do that so, it, so that they actually have to give us our information and maybe the, the personalization of the product or service can be done locally on their machine. That's quite interesting, quite an exciting proposition. I've also got some student work to read. Um, my PhD student has been writing stuff on value and values. Um, so it's trying to understand that. Um, I've also got another paper that I'm working on with a colleague, Peter, on um, business model frameworks. And he's updated that, so I've got to read that. So it's a pretty packed day, um, all quite exciting stuff. I enjoy this. Um, I get to read about value and values and try and understand what's going on in that space, um, which is kind of my bag at the moment. Um, you know, what is good? What does good mean? This morning I tweeted an article on purpose. There's some lovely work coming uh, through the Harvard Business Review looking at purpose versus corporate social responsibility, CSR. In my view, uh, CSR has, has been sort of developed um, by firms as almost like an insurance uh, where they, they sort of have corporate social responsibility and they do socially responsible things like you know supporting schools or investing in Africa or, or whatever well-intentioned activity they wish to do. But it does seem to be um, institutionalized in terms of they're then rated on their CSR and indexed and people invest and look at it and you're like, oh. it's, it's not really about what the firm is about. It's not about the firm's values, it's just something they're doing with their money maybe to look good to attract investors. And if you compare that with, with core values, you know, what are the values of the firm that the firm actually lives by, that they do, that the people believe in, that's why people go and work for that firm. Um, and you know, this is, we talk about core values, um, or <clears throat> there's another word that's coming through which is purpose. Uh, and purpose is quite a lot about the reason for the firm, the things the firm does, and maybe doesn't make a big song and dance about it, but it just lives by those core values, those purpose. You know, this is this is what we are, this is what we stand for. And I saw that when I was, I was doing a lovely piece of work with some colleagues funded by the British Academy, looking at business models for ex-offenders. We we're trying to develop this idea that you know ex-offenders could develop a business that looks after and uh, their needs when they come out of prison. You've got to very quickly make sure that they've got housing, that they've got some form of support, mental, social, and employment. You know, give somebody a reason for getting up in the morning, trust them, develop them. And we, were look, we found some great organizations. You know, the big inspiration came from America, an organization called Delancey Street. That was really cool. Mimi Silbert, real force of nature, that lady. She's so inspiring. Um, and if you look at what she's done, she's created this incredible organisation run by and for ex-offenders uh, in the states that, that takes them, you know, takes people off the street, takes people out of prison, out of jail, whatever. Really develops the individual, um, builds them up, <coughs> gives them skills, and you know, prevents reoffending. That's absolutely what we should have in the UK. So we were looking around at organisations that might be similar. We didn't find anything that was quite the same as Delancey Street. What we did find was some pretty amazing people, some amazing organisations. Um, in Maus, which is a commune, uh, people live together and develop 
uh, a business and they all contribute what they can to that community. That was quite exciting to look at. We found Network Rail. They were training ex-offenders so that um, within a prison, within Cardiff Prison, so that they could they could get jobs and work in the railway industry. Then we found Timpsons. Uh, and Timpsons are really interesting. You know, it's it's a shoe repair company in the UK, and they didn't make a big song and dance. We only heard about this um, through colleagues through um, James Timpson coming to do a talk here. We became aware of of the fact that they were giving ex-offenders a chance, employing them, and <clears throat> this was purpose. This was part of their values. They they respected the people. They gave them opportunity. And those people rewarded them with great service. I mean, well, let's be honest, how many people grew up thinking, yeah, I want to be a cobbler? Um, so where do you find great people who can support your business in the sort of numbers that a national chain like that needs? And they find in that community that there are a number of people uh, who want to do that. You give them the chance and they reward you. Um, and, and through that contact, we also found Greg's the Baker doing uh, similar things, you know, employing ex-offenders. We know how to doing that, though we haven't studied them. Um, so that piece of work is really interesting, looking at business models and value. And so I tweeted about that this morning, looking at value and values. And I also tweeted about something called ICOs. This is something Professor Irene Ung from Warwick mentioned to me, because um, I've, I've been doing a, looking a lot of blockchain and Bitcoin. And I thought, oh, I haven't really looked at ICO. I wasn't really familiar with it at all. So I've been following the development, ICO's initial coin offering. And it is where effectively you create uh, your own sort of money using blockchain as um, a tradable uh, coin money that you create. And you sell the money and hope other people think it's valuable. That's really interesting because I was looking at I'm still struggling to understand the nuance. Why isn't it a form of equity? You know, aren't you just creating effectively some form of shares because people speculate on your money, hoping your firm does better, therefore the money that is part of your firm is worth more? Because uh, otherwise, why would you buy it? Uh, but it's interesting to see how ICO, initial coin offering, and, and you know, some company type cryptocurrency uh, will develop in the future. That's a very interesting area to think about. Anyway, I've got a super busy day. Yeah, but that's what I'm going to try and achieve today. I think I've probably set myself too much goals. Yeah, we're going to review the regional studies paper for Dr. Veron van Trouw in Birmingham. Uh, he's a great, great academic. Oh, I'm going to review the value paper. We're going to contact uh, head of marketing of Weetabix to ask him about uh, DBA. Uh, we are definitely going to um, write a small review of the, the bid for tips. Uh, trust, information, privacy, security. I'm going to read my student stuff. Right, I better crack on. Ooh, it's been an intense day. So, um, what have I done? Well, <clears throat> I reviewed a paper. Really interesting. I was looking at um, something called service dominant logic. Now, service dominant logic was developed by Steve Vargo and Bob Lush. Um, it's a dominant logic is is kind of the way people think. Um, it's like for some organisations they talk about, oh, this person's been here for years and they've gone native. Well, that, what they actually mean is that individuals develop the dominant logic of that firm. <clears throat> so they think in a certain way. Well, what Vargo and Lash in service dominant logic suggest is that most people have a goods dominant logic, which means they focus upon units, say, a product, and they look at exchange. So what's a, you, know, you make a car, the car is worth a certain amount and you sell it. And that's the focus on the exchange, and you make your money. Value is in exchange. If you think about the things you buy, it, it's not the price of them so much uh, as the use of them. You know, the the umbrella is only valuable when it's raining. Otherwise, it's a bit of a liability. You may have spent money on it, but you're carrying it. It's not a resource. Barger quotes um, Zimmerman with his, his famous, you know, resources are not; they become.
this idea of the, the, a dominant logic of service for service exchange. So one exchanges services for other services. And value is actually co-created within use. And you experience value. You, you, there are still exchanges, and there is financial value in exchange, but value per se can be considered also as phenomenological. It can be considered as experience. You can't really add value when <clears throat> when you use something you you experience it uh, because somebody contributes resources you put your resources in and you co-create value uh, so value is co-created it's not added you don't give somebody value you give somebody money that's a poor proxy for value anyway so we reviewed that that took a couple of hours i read uh, my students uh, work on values, which is very nice, very interesting thinking. Uh, first year PhD student, she's um, she does very interesting work, very critical examination of Schwartz's uh, values framework, which talks about uh, how individuals' values around benevolence and uh, power uh, and family, say and love and things like that, how your values shape shape your decisions, uh, and a very nice piece of work she's done there, really critiquing and highlighting the weaknesses in that framework. So it's quite exciting having a PhD student in their first year able to do something like that. I've been looking at some work we're doing, <coughs> looking at um, personalization uh, of resources and how we might use data to do that. That's a new bit that's been developed. So I've been reading all the background material on that. Um, <coughs> I want to contribute towards the bid writing, but my I need to give it a little time to soak into my brain before I really understand it. Um, and, and then I'm, I'll talk to them about what I think there. Um, I've also spent some time looking at the Doctor of Business Administration course, which we're trying to develop. So I've been doing a bit of background reading there, uh, meeting with colleague Kyle, leading a, a group on supply and innovation management. So we had a meeting this morning with somebody about our work on service design, really focusing on value and how you create value for customers and then how you design your service to deliver that. I, I, I used to do quite a bit of work in the lean space, for those of you who understand lean. So applying some of that thinking, some of the service dominant logic thinking to really focus on how do we co-create value combining resources. Um, and what firms can we work with? How can we, we help firms out? Uh, with this, this academic theory about applying practice and, and hopefully realize good things. Um, and I've also been reading uh, about value in a paper I'm writing um, with international colleagues. Um, I've still got a lot of work to do, so I'm going to go home and continue that. Um, so it's been a long day, um, lots of reading and printing stuff out. <coughs> um, I read a reference as well, that was another job for today. Student asked for a reference, so I read that. But yeah, a day of reading again, thinking, um, but I'm going to go home now and uh, continue the reading.